Well, hello again and welcome to the VK6DS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Putting the fun back into amateur radio. Right, now, if uh, you watched the video before last, you would have seen uh, that uh, the amplifier produced about 800 watts. The HT voltage sank down from sort of 2800 down to about 2500 volts. And uh, I'd seen on uh, on YouTube that um, uh, a guy getting uh, 1500 watts or so or 1600 watts out of his GS35 with uh, 3200 volts on it, or around 3200 volts. I think he had a, a HT voltage meter that uh, he kind of he'd um, done the scale on it himself, so that might have been a little bit out, and there might have been a bit more volts there, but. Um, uh, regardless, uh, although it doesn't sound a lot more, um, that was 700 volts more than I had. So I thought, okay, well let's um, let, let's assume that that's the problem. And uh, you see written around on the internet that, um, or you know, people mentioning on YouTube, a bit of both maybe, that the GS35s like a bit of voltage and they're not terribly efficient under 3000 volts. A couple of people have suggested that I put a voltage doubler in and uh, see how it goes. So here is the new power board that I've made uh, for it. Uh, this is a, another chopping board. You get two chopping boards in a pack for five or six dollars from Kmart. This is the larger one. I've actually cut it down to size a little bit. The, uh, the one on the original board uh, the original board that I used rather was uh, the smaller of the two chopping boards and that only had two columns of capacitors in it. This one being a voltage doubler has got an extra column of capacitors which gives me uh, uh, working voltage of 5000 or maximum working, well maximum braided voltage anyway of something like 5400 volts from there to there across the, uh, across the smoothing stack, uh, across the uh, filter capacitor. So I don't think it's going to get uh, up as high as 5,000 volts. I'd be very surprised if it does. Um, this is going to be a this is a, a full wave uh, voltage doubler, and um, there is one of the strips from the previous power supply uh, full wave rectifier bridge. So there was sort of three of these six six amp 1,000 volt diodes in each leg. I've just used one of these strips, so there were six diodes in there, and I thought just to be on the safe side, um, I like the uh, I'll up the the, uh, the voltage that I'm put across these by putting another two diodes in, which is why it looks a little bit untidy because I didn't sort of start from scratch with this. This is from the other one, um, so that will give me 8,000 volts uh, across there, and uh, the 2,000 volt AC goes in on there and there, there and there. 2,000 volts AC from the transformer goes on there. Full wave voltage doubler and uh, across there will be whatever HT I end up with. So uh, you'll, you've noticed probably that the resistors aren't across the capacitors yet. Now I do have the resistors, but um, I also have some uh, smaller value uh, resistors that uh, I think I'll fit initially. Um, they're half the value, they're 50Ks, not, uh, not the 100Ks. And the reason for that is, uh, with the voltage doubler, I don't want the voltage to go um, too high with no load on it. So I don't, I don't want the valve to flash over inside, I don't want other stuff to break down. So I thought just by having half of the value, if I put 50Ks across all of these instead of 100Ks, it's only going to draw 8 and a bit milliamps. Each resistor is going to dissipate about 3 and a bit watts. Get 7 watt resistors. Um, I just put them across there just to give it a little bit more stiffening. Um, so hopefully uh, I get a nice sort of comfortable voltage with with, with um, you know with no load on it. That's not going to bother the valve and it's not going to bother anything else. So um, there we go. <clears throat> These bits here again. This is from the this is from the original one, but um, I'll change this slightly because these are just uh, uh, one meg resistors here in parallel. And uh, they went to the 30 volt meter, which was sort of recalibrated to give me th um, uh, 3,000 volts. But uh, I'll put a 50 microamp meter on there and um, put on the uh, on the scale of the meter. Um, I'll take microamps off, put volts on there times you know 100. So so the one to 50 you know, times 100 will be the one to 5,000 volts. 
So there's the uh, there's the new voltage doubler board. So it's all nice shiny uh, shiny new capacitors in there. And uh, as I say, it's built on this uh, built on this plastic uh, chopping board. And I think this method of construction with nylon capacitor clamps. On, bolted onto a nylon surface, so there's nothing conductive there. It can't, you know. Um, if I'd have put this on a printed circuit board, there's potential for tracking through the board and all that sort of stuff. So, although this doesn't look as nice um, as uh, a printed circuit board, I think um, functionally it's a lot better, personally, just my personal opinion. And uh, I sort of reinforce that opinion a bit. Because you can see how see how nice these capacitors look, and uh, here are two from the original <coughs> the original um, power supply. You can see the plastic's peeled right back. Uh, these looked exactly the same. This plastic went up and over the top there. You can see the bulge in the top of it. Another one there. Plastic peeled right back. See where the uh, there's a bulge in the top and you can see where the stuff has been coming out there and coming out of the hole, blown a hole in the middle of it. Now if these were on a printed circuit board I would probably have to make another printed circuit board because they would have you know tried to pull themselves out of the board um, and also you know if you get if you get a problem with this kind of uh, um, capacitor stack capacitor blows up blows the top off whatever just cut it out put another one in um, if they were on a pretty circuit board, probably have to make another board. So uh, just, uh, uh, I just personally, th I just think that's a, uh, this is a much better way of doing it. Um, now, uh, I didn't actually notice these were like this. Um, I <clears throat> I saw the uh, the anode voltage go from you know 2800 down to 2500, and um, I just thought, oh well, you know, it's it's a bit saggy. Um, people suggested putting a voltage doubler in, so I thought, yeah, well, I'll do that. And of course, when I took the original power board out, which is uh, the smaller one, which only had two columns of capacitors on it, uh, I noticed the capacitors were like that, and I thought, oh dear. So have I? Am I running them too close to their rated voltage, or was it because uh, initially when I put that amplifier on, um, there was a bit of instability there, and it was it was doing this sort of weird low frequency pulsing, and uh, it was pulling heaps of current out of the power supply, and uh, that might have uh, upset them. But uh, anyway, suffice to say, um, I didn't notice this until I took the power board out, and um, whether it was. Uh, these capacitors being in a sorry state that made the HT sag from 2800 down to 2500, I don't know. Um, but uh, regardless, I thought I'd uh, I'd go ahead with the voltage doubler uh, rather than rebuild it as it was, because you know I could rebuild it as it was and then find that it still sagged down to 2500 volts and I'm still only getting 800 watts out of it and I'd be back to square one. So I thought I'll go with the voltage doubler, um, see what sort of voltage I get if I get a nice comfortable voltage. Um, with no load on it, um, great. If I get a really scary voltage on it, or, or something that I think is a little bit close to uh, something that might cause a problem for the valve, um, then I'd uh, <coughs> use a variac just to wind the power supply up and down and find out what sort of voltages I need to get something useful out of the amplifier and then uh, see what I can do about it. Um, I, uh, I've borrowed a, uh, a, nice, a nice big Variac uh, to do the tests on this, so I'm not just going to apply the 2000 volts straight to this, I'll bring these up slowly. And uh, uh, the Variac of course will allow me to um, adjust, the, uh, adjust the input voltage and see what sort of voltage I can get out of it and um, what sort of voltage the valve is nice and happy at. Um, I had a a, uh, a 500 watt Variac, that was my, my own one, that uh, unfortunately uh, got smoked because uh, I was using it to run the amplifier and of course the Variac outputs a little bit more of the mains voltage and I noticed on the, uh, the, on the anode voltage it was just a, just a hair under 3000 volts 
And uh, the anode current, the idling current was about 140 milliamps. I think I showed that on a, on a video. Um, I was just, just running it to make sure it was all nice and stable. And it was, so I thought, well, I'll just leave it. I'll let it run for uh, an hour or so, just to sort of condition the tube. Uh, the valve, and uh, you know, put my hand over the top of it and all that sort of stuff. And the uh, the exhaust air through the anode radiator was barely warm. It was dissipating 450 watts, uh, or for between 420 and 450 watts, uh, with that sort of uh, idling current and that sort of anode voltage. And um, you know, the exhaust air was barely warm. It was just sitting there and uh, no problem at all. I think it was sat there forever. But uh, unfortunately, the variac uh, was only rated at 500 watts, and uh, that made a uh, bacon frying noise, produced some very nasty smelling smoke, and uh, that was that. So uh, fortunately, uh, our VK6KIF has come to the rescue and said, "Hey, I've got a, I've got a very borrow." And I said, "That'd be great, Al. Many thanks." So uh, thanks to uh, VK6KIF, I can, uh, I can uh, bring it up nice and gently, and. Um, you know, if it looks like the the, uh, the no load voltage is going to be particularly hairy, then uh, I can I can uh, see what that's going to be before I actually connect it to the valve. So that's all uh, that's going to be uh, the right way to do it. All right. Well, that's uh, I think that's about it. So there we go. There's a new voltage doubler board minus the resistors, but uh, they'll be going on tomorrow. And uh, I'll run it up either tomorrow or uh, on Saturday and. Uh, See what I can get out of it. As always, hope you found that interesting. Many thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.